JBN will keep you informed. I'm Michelle Jones. Hi, guys. Before we go into the news, please remember to like, subscribe, leave a comment, and to share the news with a friend or family member today. Now, on to the news. All informers are heroes, says Justice Minister. Minister of Justice Delroy Chalk is imploring Jamaicans to report criminal activities in their communities, calling those who do so heroes. Chalk made the remarks while speaking at the 15th staging of the Restorative Justice Conference on Wednesday, February 7, at the summit in Kingston. I was learning that the task of reducing murders cannot be left solely to the police. The minister said citizens must all be prepared to be informers. And the biggest informer, all informers are heroes. When they see persons with guns or threatening violence, bring the police in it, he said. Let us see if we can prevent a few of these criminal activities and murders. Minister Chuck also urged Jamaicans to utilize the Ministry's Restorative Justice, RJ program, to reduce murders and violence in the society. Restorative Justice seeks to resolve conflicts by having all parties involved come together to reach an agreement. If persons resolve disputes and conflicts peacefully, we can have less murders. It is just not right that we have over 1,000 murders per year. And I hope that in 2024, for the first time in perhaps 30 odd years, we can see murders drop below 1,000. Wouldn't that be great, he asked, noting that more than 30% of murders stem from domestic violence, Chuck said. I know that restorative justice can play a part. The testimonials are such that when you listen to them, you ask, why doesn't Jamaica know more about the healing power of restorative justice? He went on to say that restorative justice officers, facilitators, and volunteers must begin to move with missionary zeal in schools, churches, business places, in communities, and on construction sites to curtail violence. The Ministries of Justice and Education on Monday, February 5, signed a Memorandum of Understanding for the continued delivery of restorative practices training in schools across Jamaica. Former MP Jolan Silvero remanded again. Former parliamentarian Jolan Silvero, who is charged with the murder of his wife, was again remanded when he appeared in court this afternoon. A bail application is to be made on his behalf on April 11 in the Home Circuit Court. The date was scheduled before Justice Vinnett Graham Allen, who for the second time opted not to allow the media inside the courtroom. Melissa, 42, was murdered at her Stony Hill St. Andrew home. Initial reports had indicated that she died in her sleep on November 10 of natural cause, a month shy of her 8th wedding anniversary. An autopsy performed three weeks after her death unearthed at least three bullet fragments in her body. This prompted the police to upgrade the probe to a murder investigation. Elderly woman killed in St. James Motor Vehicle Collision. An elderly woman died as a result of injuries she sustained in a motor vehicle collision on the Windsor Lodge Main Road in St. James on Tuesday, February 6. That is 70-year-old Eunice Edwards of Somerton, St. James. Reports from the Adelphi police are that about 9.30 a.m., Edwards was walking along the roadway when the driver for Toyota Allen motor car swerved to avoid a pothole. The driver reported lost control of the vehicle, collided in a light post, then hit Edwards. She sustained injuries and was assisted to hospital where she died while undergoing treatment. Investigations continue. JLP politician who was involved in a fight nominated as candidate for Trinityville, Dean Jones, the Jamaica Labour Party JLP politician, was involved in a brawl and pulled a gun during the fight with another man earlier this week as being nominated as the party's council candidate for the Trinityville division in St. Thomas Western. Jones was given the nod during nomination day proceedings on Thursday, days after a video surfaced of the physical altercation between the politician and another man, since identified as 58-year-old businessman Wayne Walker. Lawyers for Jones, in a statement on Tuesday, said their client was physically attacked by persons unknown to him, causing him to sustain injuries while he was conducting business. The letter stated that Jones was in imminent fear of his life. The letter was signed by attorneys at law, Alexander Shaw and Trevor Koff. Aware of the mounting threat to his person, our client took defensive action to de-escalate the situation. A police report was also reportedly filed. In a statement also on Tuesday, the Opposition People's National Party condemned the actions of Jones with Shadow Minister of Citizen Security, Peter Bunting, accusing Jones of carrying out acts of intimidation. Beaches saw trial adjourned until February 19. 
the Everton Beach Stop McDonald and Oscar Barnes trial has been adjourned until February 19, when lawyers for the defence are expected to make their closing addresses. McDonald and Barnes are on trial for the July 20, 2020 murder of McDonald's second wife, Tonya. Prior to Wednesday's adjournment, one of Barnes's attorneys, Ernest Davis, called a character witness to give evidence on his behalf. The business manager and mother of Barnes' son said she was surprised that he was accused of killing Tony MacDonald. She said it was the last news she expected to hear, as she did not know him to be a killer. The character witness, who said she has known Barnes for 14 years, in response to a question from his lawyer, agreed that his being charged was unlike his character. She said she has never seen him angry or involved in any fight or quarrel over the years, telling the court that I knew him as a very peaceful and jovial person. The witness's relationship with Barnes was, however, scrutinized by the prosecutor who sought to establish that she did not know much about him. According to the witness, she had a two-year intimate relationship with Barnes, which ended around 2011. She further explained that although the relationship ended, she would see and communicate with Barnes, who regularly visited his son and brought items for him. Additionally, she said she would see him twice weekly at a cook shop in Anato Bay, St. Mary. But the prosecutor told her, that she really could not say what Barnes was doing with his life from 2011 up to 2020, a suggestion to which she disagreed. Fielding further questions from the prosecutor, the witness denied knowing that Barnes hung out in an alley in St. Mary and that he went to Mansion Hill to buy guns and that he knew the prosecution's main witness, Denvalin Minot. The witness also denied knowing Barnes's whereabouts on the day Tonya was killed. Continuing, the prosecutor again suggested that the witness did not know much about Barnes's life, but the witness did not relent in her stance that she knew him well. She replied, he's not going to tell me every move he makes. He is my son's dad and we speak regularly. Only one character witness took the stand as part of Barnes's case. Shopkeeper charged with setting couple's house on fire, resulting in $12 million damage. A woman who was reportedly a part of a group of people who attacked a couple and set their house on fire in Cottage Road, Westmoreland, has been charged. Charged with arson is 59-year-old Venola Forrest, otherwise called Sister, a shopkeeper of Alma District, Grange in the parish. Reports from the Savlamar Police are that about 10 p.m. on Tuesday, January 23, a man and a woman were outside their home when two vehicles drove up and stopped. A group of men alighted from the vehicles and started throwing stones at them. In a bid to escape injury, the couple ran into their house. The attackers reportedly left and later returned with Forrest in their company. They entered the couple's house where they smashed windows, destroyed several pieces of furniture, and then set the house on fire, resulting in damage amounting to $12 million. The attackers then escaped in the waiting motor vehicles. A report was made to the police and Forrest was taken into custody later the same day. She was charged after she was pointed out in an identification parade. Forrest is scheduled to appear in the Savlamar Parish Court on Tuesday, February 13. PNP and JLP urge peace amid local government election campaign. People's National Party Deputy General Secretary Nikisha Burchell has sought to explain the national campaigning being employed by the PNP for the local government election similar to the Jamaica Labour Party. Speaking Thursday in an interview, Burchell said because of the delay in holding the parish council election, the political parties have found themselves in a unique position. So we find that the electorate, based on the information we have access to, they are interested in some macro issues as well. So we are running one message, but on two plans. We are going to see to the national issues that are of importance to the people, but of course a large part of our focus will be on local government issues. And we're going to be dovetailing the message to ensure that even though we may speak to the national priorities, we believe that local government, national development, sorry, is only possible when local government works. I'm concerned about the comments being made by someone as senior as Mr. Delroy Chuck. You started a program by prefacing some things he had, he had said recently. But chief amongst them, he used John, political John, to describe the leader of the opposition. So from one side of his mouth, he did that, while on the other side, he's calling for civility in the mm -hmm. campaign. So I am indeed um, very much cautioning both sides of the political divide to ensure that civility remains. Meanwhile, chairman of the Jamaica Labour Party's 
Public Relations Committee, Robert Nestor Morgan, has dismissed the notion that the PMP base appears more energized than the JLP for the local government election. When I saw the Prime Minister yesterday downtown, and you know, the day before yesterday, I think, um, and I saw the entire street filled with labor rights, and when we see across the island, and Marie Vaz's campaign, several other members of parliament campaign, what I see is our energy and a mobilization taking place. Mass meetings and rallies does not win elections. 160,000 strong was proven to be wrong. We are not going to be busing people all over the island to go to mass rallies when we need to engage the people household in their communities and situate the gains that we have made on their behalf um, to them so they understand what we have done. I don't believe that this campaign is going to be a rough campaign in terms of um, the type of behavior of political actors. But in political theater, you're always going to have situations where people say things that may be inappropriate. And rightly, you as a journalist have the right to draw them up. And we as a party or the TNT, I suspect, will do the same thing. But it's, an, it's a part of the process. It used to be much worse, by the way. Um, by the way, it wouldn't have been just mere sharp comments, but in the past it used to work. So we must give thanks for the evolution that we've had as a country. Both the JLP and the PMP nominated their full slate of candidates today for upcoming local government election on February 26. JBN, we keep you informed. Please remember to subscribe, like, share, leave us a comment, and click the notification bell to receive our daily news items.